For over a decade, I've been dealing with symptoms that look exactly like peripheral neuropathy, except all the tests say I don't have it. There's no nerve damage, no loss of function, just a burning, prickling sensation that's slowly been getting worse and worse. Today, I'm going to show you what finally started to work, for me at least. I'm going to be talking about a problem that's slowly been getting worse and worse for about a decade, what I've been doing about it, and my result. The problem, peripheral neuropathy, or at least peripheral neuropathy-like symptoms. We'll get into the science and then break down my protocol step by step, and then I'll share my rather remarkable results. By the way, I'm Hitch. I've been immersed in longevity science for almost a decade, testing, researching, and applying strategies to slow, stop, or even reverse biological aging. And I've reversed my biological age by 13 years. This isn't a side project. It's not a hobby. This is what I do all day, every day. Okay, so I'm not even sure when this started. It began so quietly and so slowly. It's been over a decade, though. I began to notice a weird, faint sensation in the soles of my feet. Sometimes it was like I was wearing socks when I wasn't. Sometimes a prickly feeling. Sometimes a burning sensation. Not painful exactly, but hard to describe. At first, it was so subtle, I barely registered it. Easy to ignore. So, I did. But over time, it didn't go away. It got worse. Not all at once. No sudden shift. Just a slow, steady increase. Year after year. From barely noticeable to something I was aware of constantly. It didn't matter, it didn't matter whether I was sitting, standing, moving. It was always there. Not enough to interfere with my life. Not at first. But it was getting more and more of my attention. Eventually, a couple of years ago, it reached a point where I realized I needed to do something. It wasn't disabling, but it was building. I could see where it was going. So I decided to start doing something about it. I went to the VA and they ran a full panel of neurological tests, a monofilament test, a nerve conduction study, and electromyography. And according to all those tests, my nerves were fine. No damage, no loss of function. But the symptoms, still there, still escalating. And textbook for peripheral neuropathy. The doctors told me this kind of thing, symptoms with no measurable damage, was surprisingly common and that tracking down the root cause would be difficult and would likely take time. So I started exploring other paths. And you know how sometimes, without even planning it, things just fall together. Well, that's what happened for me. And what I'm about to share in this video, this protocol that I've been on for the past month or so, is the result. And it's the one that finally started to turn things around. So what exactly is peripheral neuropathy? At its core, it's a condition where the nerves in your extremities, usually the feet or hands, gets damaged. That damage disrupts how signals are sent back and forth between the nerves and the brain. And the result? Burning, tingling, numbness, prickling, or pain. The most common cause is damage brought about by diabetes, chemotherapy, uh, autoimmune disorders, infections, or even vitamin deficiency. In those cases, you can usually point to a clear culprit. But sometimes people have the symptoms without any clear underlying cause. And in some cases, like mine, and more often than you'd think, they don't have any nerve damage. And that's what made my situation so weird. I had all the classical symptoms, that burning and tingling, the phantom sock feeling, but my nerves? According to every test, they were just fine, undamaged. That doesn't make the symptoms any less real. It just makes them harder to treat. And in cases like mine, where traditional medicine can't pin down a cause, you're kind of left to figure things out on your own. Now, none of this came out of a grand plan. I didn't sit down with a whiteboard and map it all out. It evolved one piece at a time. Some of it was opportunity, some of it was tuition, and some of it was just keeping my ears open and paying attention to people who know what the hell they're talking about. Okay, so the protocol I'm using right now, the one that's actually making a difference, has three separate components. And I'm gonna walk you through each one, how it came into the picture, what it's supposed to do, and the science behind it, and how I've been using it. And the first piece is red light. Now, this started with an email. A red light therapy brand reached out and asked if I'd be interested in trying out one of their panels. Now. I already knew that red light therapy has shown promise for peripheral neuropathy. I also knew that 
red light panels can be a little spendy. So when they offered me to send me a device to test for free, I jumped on it. Now, let me take a minute here to talk about the panel itself because it's become a really solid part of my daily routine. The panel that I've been using is from a company called Bestqual, and they sent me this device to try out, and honestly, it's been excellent. It's what they call a half-body panel. The actual dimensions are about 19 and a half inches tall, just over eight inches wide, and around three inches deep. So it's small enough to set up on a table or a chair, but powerful enough to get full therapeutic coverage on your feet, legs, or whatever area you're targeting. The build quality is solid. The interface is dead simple. You just plug it in, set your time, and go. And the price point is accessible. I think this unit sells for about $319. It can be used with other units. It can be used with a mobile stand. And last time I checked their site, they had some refurbished units that were going for about $269. If you want to check that out, there's a link in the description below along with a discount code. It emits both red light at 660 nanometers and near infrared light at 850 nanometers, which is exactly what you want for a therapy grade device. Now, these are the most common wavelengths used in red light therapy. Red light at uh, 660 nanograms penetrates just below the skin, improving circulation, reducing surface level inflammation, and triggering healing signals in the tissue. Near infrared at 850 nanogram goes deeper, reaching muscle, fascia, and even peripheral nerves. That's where it can stimulate mitochondria by activating cytochrome C oxidase. More mitochondrial activity means more ATP, which means more cellular energy, better recovery, and in some cases, improved nerve function. There's clinical data on this. Red light and uh, near infrared therapy has been shown to reduce pain restore sensation, and boost circulation in people with diabetic or chemo-induced neuropathy. Now, if you want a deeper dive into the science of red light, I've done full videos on the topic. I go into way more detail on how red light works, what it does, and where it fits in a broader longevity strategy. There's links right up here or in the description below. Okay, so here's what I did. Once a day, usually in the evening, I sit with my feet propped up in front of this panel about six inches away with the light aimed directly at the soles of my feet. It's really important to be that close because light falls off really quickly and the amount of exposure drops away just as fast, actually faster. I set the timer for 45 minutes and I use both red light and near infrared for the session. I do this every day. Consistency is important. So while I was settling into the red light routine, I was also getting my first exposure to peptides. Now, I've been aware of peptides for quite a while, and I've been really interested in them. I know a lot of folks who have been using peptides, and they've reported really good results. Now, luckily for me, Robin, the trainer that I've been using, has been into peptides for over a year now, and she got me started on them. What stood out to me was just how targeted peptides can be. Some are geared towards muscle repair. Some support cognitive function. Some modulate immune response. And some, the ones that really caught my eye, are great for healing damaged tissues and calming down inflammation. I started by exploring a few regenerative peptides, BPC-157, TB-500, and GHK-CU. Now, these are known for promoting tissue repair, improving circulation, and reducing inflammation. That alone seemed promising for nerve-related symptoms. But the real breakthrough came when I found ARA-290. This one is different. AR290, uh, ARA290 specifically targets neuropathic symptoms. It works on the innate repair receptor, which is a mouthful, but what it means is that it helps calm inflammatory signaling and may actually promote nerve regeneration. There are clinical trials showing reduced pain, improved sensory function, and better outcomes in people with small fiber neuropathy. That kind of made it a no-brainer. So here's what it looks like in practice. I take BPC-157 and TB-500 together in a compound called Wolverine, and I take CHK and ARA-290. I take them Monday through Friday. I use small microdosed amounts. For dosing information, I use a guide by Hunter Williams, which he calls his peptide cheat sheet. If you're interested, I'll link to a page on his channel where you can sign up and grab your own copy. Now, I'm going to get a bunch of comments asking where I got my compounds. 
I get them from my trainer, Robin Littlewood. There are several companies that distribute peptides in the US. Look them up. All right, let's talk about the third piece, niacin. I've known for a while now that the flushing side effect of niacin can be used as a delivery aid to help get molecules deeper into the body. That flush, that's vasodilation, your capillaries opening up, more circulation, better access. And that, in theory, means better delivery of the compounds I'm using. For example, if you know about Stamets stack, for which, uh, which is for neurogenesis, it uses the same idea. Niacin opening up the capillaries and helping compounds cross the blood-brain barrier more effectively. That got me to thinking, if I'm taking peptides that I want circulating through the system, reaching damaged or inflamed tissue, then it makes sense to do something that improves blood flow right before I take them, right? So every day, about 20 minutes before my peptides, I take one gram of niacin. Once the flush starts and I feel the heat and the tingle, I know it's time to take the peptides. It's not a breakthrough idea. That approach has been used in other contexts for years. Detox protocols, performance supplements, even clinical uh, therapies. It's simple, it's cheap, and it makes sense as part of the stack. Does it make a big difference? I don't know, maybe. The research that I've done suggests that it might. All I know is the protocol seems to be helping. So I'm gonna stick with it. Now, if you're still with me and you're into this kind of stuff, the science, the protocols, the results, I got something for you. I run a couple of longevity-focused communities on school.com. The free community is where we start. That's where you'll find my beginner-level courses, Foundations of Longevity and Longevity Interventions. Then there's the paid community for people who are ready to go deeper. That's where I'll be posting advanced courses. The first course in that series, and it's on hormesis, will be launching soon. And I'm planning on dropping 15 to 20 advanced courses over the next year. I'll drop links to both in the description below. Come on, check it out. Now, I didn't expect dramatic results right away. I've been at this long enough to know better. When something takes a decade to develop, it's not gonna vanish in a week or two. I told myself, be patient, track what happens, let the data speak for itself. But I gotta say, what's happening so far has actually been kind of surprising. It started with small things. One morning, it took me a minute to realize that there were no symptoms. No burning sensation, no pins and needles. Now, mornings were usually when the symptoms were the least. But now, most mornings, there are no symptoms. And most days, that continues throughout the day. And that right there, that's a massive shift. As I'm recording this, it's uh, about one o'clock in the afternoon. And this moment, if I check with myself, there are no symptoms. It doesn't happen every day, but most days. And even when there are symptoms, they're less severe. Now, every day, me and Mason, my American Bulldog, go for a walk. It's about a mile and a quarter. It takes anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how many bushes and trees he needs to sniff. And that walk aggravates the symptoms. It always has. And once the symptoms fire up, they're there to stay for the rest of the day. It takes being off my feet for about eight hours when I sleep for them to go away. But here's the thing. Even at their worst, they're not as bad as they were. I'd say that they're about half as bad, maybe, maybe two thirds, but I've only been doing this protocol for about a month. Now I'm not pretending that this is over. I don't think one month is enough to undo a decade of nerve dysfunction. Hell, three months might not be enough, but this feels different. It feels like it's moving in the right direction, not just holding the line, not just slowing the decline, actually reversing it. And that's what's got me excited, cautious, realistic, but excited. Because for the first time, I feel like I might actually be getting ahead of this thing. So yeah, getting a handle on my peripheral neuropathy hasn't been easy. It's been a process. And I don't know how far I'll be able to take that process or how long it'll last. But so far, it looks like it's working. And that's what I want to leave you with. Aging, healing, this stuff doesn't turn on a dime, especially when you're dealing with something as complex as, as nerve dysfunction. But if you pay attention, if you stack the right strategies, if you give your body what it needs and give it time, things can change, sometimes faster than you can expect. This wasn't about guessing. It wasn't about trying everything. It was about being intentional, choosing tools with real mechanisms behind them and sticking with them long enough to see what they could actually do. 
If you're dealing with something similar, whether it's neuropathy or some other chronic issue, don't wait for the magic bullet. Build your protocol, follow the data. Don't stop until you shift the trajectory because it can shift. I'm seeing it firsthand. If you want to go deeper into this stuff and check out my courses, start with my free school community right here. All right, that's it for this video. I'm out of here. Catch you guys next week.